The following podcast is a mass media production. Hey, this is Chad Namiro. And I'm Kelly Namiro. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Podcast, a lifestyle podcast where we will interview guests about wellness, business, and just about everything in between. Our goal is to help you develop a lifestyle that promotes health, wholeness, and success. Through our conversations, we hope to inspire you to live a beautiful, full, and joyful life as you navigate balancing the chaos. We hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we have a very special guest, uh, one of our dear friends, and in many ways our spiritual guru to our family. Her name is Christy L, and she is coming in today to talk a little bit about meditation, relaxation, and just keeping a level of calm, which I think after last year has uh, never been more important. Absolutely. Um, Christy L has been a catalyst. She's been the catalyst in my whole healing journey in a time where I was feeling really erratic. My stress levels were out of control. My digestion was horrible. Like everything in my life felt like it was going the wrong way. I walked into one of her yin classes one day and I walked out of there feeling so good. And it was the first time in a long time I really had felt good. And it was because I took the time to slow down rather than speeding up and just continuing to push through my to-do list. She's really the person who's taught me how to meditate, how to get back in alignment with my own values. Um, so today on the show, we talk a lot about that. We talk about if you're new to meditation, starting a practice, we talk a lot about spirituality and chakras, and we talk about getting connected to what's important to you and the really the benefits of doing a meditation practice because it goes so much further beyond what you might think. You might think you're the person who doesn't need it, but you if that's the case, you're the person who needs it the most. So without further ado, let's get into this episode with Christielle. She has so much gold to share with us. Are you looking for a trusted resource for luxury Las Vegas real estate? The Ivan Share Group is the expert in the luxury Las Vegas real estate market, specializing in high-end homes and luxury high-rise properties. And trust me on this one, Chad and I can attest. They are so amazing. We've been working with them for the last few months on trying to find a new home, and they're showing us the most incredible properties. The Ivan Share Group is a dynamic team of leading real estate experts dedicated to client satisfaction. Their extensive expertise in Las Vegas and Henderson allows them to help luxury home buyers find their dream home no matter what their needs are. And like I said before, we are super, super specific on what we need, like a playroom for the kids and a home gym and (laughs) things that not all homes have. And they are really good at showing us exactly what we want to see. They're dedicated to helping you buy, sell, or invest. So contact Ivan and his team today at 702-315-0223 or visit isluxury.com to learn more and learn what they do differently. The Ivan Share Group is luxury, your trusted resource for Las Vegas real estate. Christiel, my beautiful angel, amazing friend, yoga and meditation teacher for the last seven years. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Show. We're so happy to have you on today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) So much for joining us. I can't wait to dive in and really discuss yoga meditation on all of the benefits and potential that it can really have on other people's lives. Um, Because I think that so many people think that health is just about what you eat or supplements you take, but it's really about getting your mind right too. So um, I want to start off by really just asking you so that you can let our audience know how you got started doing yoga and meditation and really what your, your whole lead up to that was. So, so what was your story leading into your career? Cause I know yeah. I'm always this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I guess going way back, you know, I always knew as a kid, I always knew I wanted to help people. I just knew that from a very young age, I'm like, I need to help people feel better, you know? And, and that took me to major in psychology. Um, I just wanted to understand people. And then right after I graduated from college in Illinois, um, 
I knew I wasn't supposed to be there anymore. So I was either going to go um, somewhere and get my master's in psychology, go to clown school in Florida, <laughs> or uh, pack everything up and drive to Las Vegas and be a dancer. <laughs> so just, uh, just one day I'm like, I'm going to go to Vegas, you know? So I just packed up my car and uh, drove out back in the day when like the big brick cell phones, you know, <laughs> and I just drove out by myself and came here. And, you know, then I was a dancer, mostly ballroom dancing and in shows and, you know, go-go dancing like at Studio 54. So I, I was really dancing the whole time and performing uh, for quite some time. And then that naturally led me into my first yoga class. Actually, my um, one of my ballroom dance students, he's like, you should try yoga. And uh, <laughs> that was probably 17 or 18 years ago. My first yoga class, uh, I remember the exact studio. It's not here anymore. And I remember somehow it was like five other people and I had to do a, a headstand. But you know, you're, you've never been to one before. So I found myself in a headstand I body slammed down, knocked the wind out of me, oh. have to crawl myself back to my mat. <laughs> so that was my first yoga class about 18 years ago. Well, then I, I revisited it and then I started going back and I didn't let that class break me. <laughs> and uh, you wanted more. I just, what? You knew you wanted more. <laughs> I know, there's, there's, I need more of this. But um, anyway, so just, you know, after, you know, dancing for so long, I, I started doing Bikram yoga. And it just felt so good to move my body. Um, and I loved the set series because you could really like track your progress. And mm -hmm. just anyway, through there, um, I realized I'm like, I want to teach this. I want to help people feel like this because for me, it gets me so out of my head into my body. Um, even if it's just for that 90 minutes, I'm not thinking about other things. I'm right there sweating and stretching and feeling everything. So yeah, I just decided I'm going to do a teacher training. And that was about 15 years ago. And, and actually for my very first class I taught, I've been teaching full time ever since. So I just kind of hit the ground running and never stopped. And it's, yeah, it's been amazing. So that's so awesome. And I think that one of the really key points of what you just said was when you started doing yoga even before you became a teacher, you realized that it got you out of your own head and into your own body. So I think that for me was one of the biggest benefits in starting to do when I started doing yin yoga with you, because it really helped me to slow down and get out of my racing thoughts. And so I know that's one benefit, but could you let our audience know what are some other benefits of having a yoga or a meditation practice um, just besides that? Yeah, well, and you know, I do both yoga and meditation. To me, they just go hand in hand. Um, yoga, to me, it's so important to move the body. Um, first of all, because a yoga practice will tell you nothing but the truth. It's just going to tell you until you show up on a mat and do a stretch, you're like, oh my gosh, until I sat here on the mat and did the stretch, I had no idea my whole right side was locked up. You know, so often you're on the couch and you don't feel a thing, but you get in a yoga class and you get asked to do maybe a movement you normally wouldn't do. And the truth reveals itself. And then and not in a judgment way, but wow, you get to see what's out of balance, where you've been holding all the emotions, um, where it's been stuck. Um, yeah, so that's why the yoga, it just will tell you the beautiful and sometimes brutal truth about what's going on in the body. And yeah, meditation, meditation just helps calm this little noodle down because we're trained to when we can just drop in we become an open vessel and that way we're co-creating with the universe you know one thing we talked a lot about was perfectionism and you know sometimes we have to do everything perfectly and we're so stuck in being so human and I've got to do it right and it's going to be this way we actually cut the magic off of this creation because it's almost like we have blinders on when we're trying to do everything so perfectly. And if we can have a meditation or yoga practice, to me, it feels like it 
pulls the blinders off and opens us up. And when these ideas drop in that we think, oh, I came up with this great idea. It's no, we opened up to the greater source. It's like whew, beautiful, magical things are that are way beyond anything we ever could have come up with on ourselves or on our own, just start to work into the, you know, formula. So it just, it, life becomes a lot more magical and a lot less rigid and more open and in the flow. So <laughs> yeah, when you're surrendering, right? Absolutely. I think that's so, so true. It's when you can learn to let go of that control, which is what we talk about so, so often, because I think that as a recovering perfectionist myself, it's something that I still struggle with. And, um, you know, when you find yourself in that mode, sitting down and letting go of the thoughts by just tuning into your breath is the best way to do that, to let go of that control. But one thing that you said that I thought was really interesting about yoga was when it came to uh, storing emotion in certain places of the body. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, because I believe so much in the mind body connection and that everything that we think can really be felt in our bodies in a certain way, whether it's tightness or tension, or it's just stuck trapped energy. So, um, I know that that might be a foreign concept to some of our audience members. So if you could expand on that thought a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, we all know we experience emotions and <clears throat> the word emotion just stands for energy and motion. So it doesn't really even matter what the emotion is. It's just as energy that's trying to move. And I always use the example a lot, uh, you know, when you feel like you have to cry, even when you were a kid and you have to cry and either someone says stop or you just don't feel like you should and you swallow the tears back. And, you know, when you get that lump in your throat, that was energy that was moving. It was moving and we <clears throat> stopped it. So every time we did that, if we don't allow the emotion, the energy to move it, it will go somewhere and just tuck itself in somewhere. And a lot of us, when we were younger through our lives, you know, known and unknown, we just, we stuffed a lot of stuff down. Anytime we didn't speak our truth or we, you know, we're told, don't be angry. Just don't cry. It's just, so we all just kind of swallowed it down and just kind of tucked itself. And those are just trapped emotions. So again, in a physical yoga practice, you get in and you can see if your shoulders are up to here, or if one shoulder's down or the back's locked up or the hamstrings are gnarled up. I mean, it's just like, wow, that's what I've been holding. And then in the physical yoga practice through the breath and the stretch and the holding and the movement, it starts to unwind it. Well, and once it starts to unwind itself from the tissues, you know, and the fascia and just everything inside, it also will start to emerge energetically. And maybe we'll start to have memories or feel things again. A lot of times you'll cry in a yoga class and you're like, why am I crying? <laughs> you know, because it's like, I'm just doing a sun salutation, but maybe something got unraveled. <sighs> something from when you were a child, you don't even need, it actually doesn't even matter what it was. It just, what matters is it came up, you could see it, feel it, and then release it. So yeah, a lot of the physical stuff is emotional, so. Do, do you feel that, you know, there's many different types of yoga and, and probably more so today than than ever before. Um, you know, there, there's there's some that are that are much more geared towards the physical aspect of the practice, and there are, there are certain certainly some that are more geared towards uh, you know meditation and, and calmness of the mind. Like for you, are they always integrated, or how do you practice potentially, um, or do you practice them separately, or, or you know for someone looking to get into this, uh, you know how would they how would they start, and and how do they really get the advantages of you know, the mind and also the body, I guess. Yeah, no, that's a super good question. Cause there are, I mean, there are yeah. Yeah. so yeah. many different kinds, Yeah. but, um, I, you know, one thing is we tend to do what we like and we tend to avoid what we need, but, you know, but really, so a lot of times if people are like, go, 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 go. Okay. Good. I want a nice fast power. Yes. I want to go, go, go. But really, if you're always go, 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 
chances are you probably need a slow, like a yin practice. Right. So, so you can fit yeah. it to your, you know, what you're working on or your personality. Yeah, it can be always in growth for sure. Yeah. yeah. And do you see yeah, yeah. just kind of sitting in and, and, you know, sitting still, sitting calmly and, and really getting ready for, you know, whatever degree of physical practice you're about to get into. And then of course, end in the same way, just to kind of set the mind. Yeah, like little bookends of silence. And also it really, it gives you a very clear marker of what the practice did for you. You sit in stillness, you acknowledge what am I feeling now in my body and my mind and my heart and my soul. You go through a practice, whatever it is, a hard vinyasa, a nice slow, deep stretch yin, yeah. uh, move meditation where you're shaking. And then at the end you check back in and it's, ooh, you get to see what it does for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I think that it's important for people to know that, you know, when you check in after a class, you're always going to feel good, right? But there are certain days where you come to your mat where yeah. it's some days are just harder than others and it's harder to get there. And I think that the journey is really nonlinear. Even for me, who's been doing this with you for seven years, but actually my first yoga class was on a date with Chad 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. Good work, Chad. That's a good date. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, that the reason why I do it is because I know I always feel good afterwards, but there is resistance some days. And I can't sure. lie and say, tell other people that there's not. Like some days it is harder than others. Um, and I know that you and I have these conversations about the journey being a bit non-linear and you might have slip ups and go back into old patterns of behavior, right? When you think you're making a breakthrough and you're not, you know, getting super angry at your husband and flying off the handle anymore, like <laughs> something so small, it's like, then it pops right <laughs> back up. And, and I think that's the importance of the practice, but can you give our listeners a little insight into the importance of understanding that it's not a really a linear thing? Yeah. So when it comes to, yeah, the actual yoga practice, it's, you know, it is just with anything, but, but knowing, even if you show up with the racing mind, it's always a practice of non-judgment too. It's like, wow, I just couldn't slow down today, but you, you still always show up. And the truth is at the end of any practice, you really are never like, man, I shouldn't have done that. You know, it's gonna when you go out with friends and then you're like, oh man, I was kind of tired. I probably didn't need to do that. But with yoga or meditation, I honestly, I could almost say 100%, nobody's ever said, I shouldn't have done that, you know? <laughs> and, and so it really is just the getting there. And, and one other thing that, you know, and I always talk about this in my classes and my healings, mostly in the meditations is it, it's so big right now. So often people are reading about meditation and reading and hearing about everyone's amazing experiences. And it's like, yes, yes. And then even they talk about what they've heard other people say, and they're doing everything, but actually doing it themselves. Yeah. And the thing is, that's where the magic is. When you, when you sit down and you have the experience of even just a taste of it for a moment in a physical practice or a meditation or a healing, it, when you just get that tiny taste of, yeah. and then you want to come back for more, you know? So, you, and you never know when it'll happen, um, but that's what, what keeps you coming back. Even on those days when the mind is spinning, even for a, a glimmer, just a tiny moment, if you're just in breath where your physical body just disappears it's like and that's why we do this huh and no one can ever take that away from you you know what I mean it's, it's not about reading about it anymore or talking about it or keep reading about all the benefits it's about actually sitting down or showing up and just having the experience on a, on a regular basis too so I know that for me when I first started doing this with you like I experienced exactly what you were just saying. Like it was really hard for me because I have been going for so long with this racing mind and this energy that was just so overwhelming all the time. And that whole perfectionist mentality that we were talking about, I was never able to just drop in and slow down. I was always moving to the next 
thing, next thing, next thing. What are a couple of practical tips? And like, and now that, let me, let me practice this. And after, I would say probably a year of just going back and going back and going back was when I finally got the first taste of what it feels like to have a clear mind. And it was amazing. And that's why I still do it today. Um, but what are some practical tips for people who might get discouraged the first time that they sit down to meditate and they're like, I'm doing this wrong. This isn't working. This isn't for me. Yeah. Thoughts keep coming. <laughs> yeah. What, what are some practical? Yeah. Well, I have some good and some bad news <laughs> because the, I mean, it's all good news is the truth is when you start with like, when you first start to sit and meditate, it's uh, here's the example I always use. It's like, uh, let's say there are, you live in a house and there's a basement mm -hmm. and anything you don't want to deal with, like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to open the door and put it in the basement. Oh, oh I'm going to put this in the basement too. Oh, I don't feel like dealing with that emotion. So just over the course of however many years you are, when you start to sit down on the mat to actually meditate, when you meditate, it's a cleansing process. So it's like opening the door for the first time, like, oh. <gasps> So it, the truth is, it's not going to be this blissful experience at first. Like it, it's the things will come rushing up and you can't avoid that. But every time you sit down, it's like you take a few things out of the basement. You sit down again, a few more things. So the thoughts come, but the thing is, it's not all rainbows and butterflies and an occasional unicorn. It's Ooh, here's what I haven't dealt with in a long time, but it's a beautiful cleansing process. So if you do sit down and the thoughts are there, that's beautiful. Keep sitting down. And, and one thing on that, that I use is I use a lot of um, powerful breath and I use a lot of shaking because if you can get into sensation, if it, it's hard, even for me, sometimes just in the morning, just sit down and think nothing. <laughs> uh, no. so for me a breath that a really powerful breath that I use is and I'll shake while I do a powerful breath and then I'll do that for maybe one two three minutes and then I yeah and I'm already there. Okay. So sometimes you need, yeah, non O shaped mouth, and you breathe really deep into the belly. Mm -hmm. And even if you just start for one minute and then build a two minutes, um, or just shaking to put on some drum music. Kelly, you and I have done this before where you shake out all the thoughts and then you sit down and that way your body's tingling your heart is beating your your body's vibrating and you're not thinking and then that's a nice gateway to get into a stillness practice mm -hmm. do you have a routine is it you know everyone's different but for you specifically and maybe what you recommend is it you know every morning or is it every morning plus every time you just feel stuck you feel like you really need that uh you know and and did you start you're doing it, you know, maybe a few times a day for shorter periods and now building up and to, to what, you know, whatever it is you currently do? And I think to tack onto that, is it the first thing you do in the morning? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you, you know, do you do a couple other things and then go see? Yeah. Them? Yeah. So super. So I'll answer both of those. The first, um, well, I'll say I started meditating. I'll say like, I actually started doing it. I stopped reading about it and talking about it. And then I started doing it uh, about six years ago was when I kind of dove in deep to the healing journey and meditation. And, and through that, you know, six, seven years is that, um, I've been through some intense ones, especially doing the teacher training. Like we would have our morning sadhana where we take cold showers. We do breath work, a full Kriya chanting. Um, so the practice, the meditation would be like an hour and a half. And I'm going to be totally honest. I was like, oh, it's too long. I don't want to do this. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I was pouting and I was like, 
and then again, it, it was so beautiful. I'm so grateful. And I share now because I help teach the teacher trainings. I always share that I was a brat. I was like, I don't want to, there's no time. Because what was happening, my ego was breaking down, you know? And I'm so grateful for, it was about, I think, seven, eight months that I had that really intense practice that put my feet on the ground. But I was a brat for a lot of it. Because the truth is, though, I thought someone was making me do it, and it was only for me. The people who say that they don't have time are always the people who need it the most, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And, and let's be honest, not everyone is an hour and a half. So I had a good seven-month run where I had that really intense practice. Yeah. I don't do that now. <laughs> so... And now what I do, and again, it changes because I'm very much, uh, how am I feeling? But my morning practice now is I wake up and after I take my little beautiful Inca out, I, you know, I make a cup of coffee and I go, I sit on the balcony and I read A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, oh, I'm actually almost through. Kelly, you already finished it, didn't you? No, I haven't finished it. I oh yeah. So I'm almost <laughs> done. So really for about how long this book is, I wake up every morning and read a message from the Course in Miracles. And then I write in my journal, my intentions for, you know, what I'm wanting that day and not really physically what I'm wanting, but I want to feel peace, joy, deep connection and unconditional love. That's how I'm going to show up. So then I'll write in my journal and then I'll go into my meditation room. And what I do now is I'll put on something inspirational. Lately, I've been putting on Abraham. A, a lot of people have probably heard of Abraham. And I'll just listen to a 15-minute um, inspirational thing as I do my sun salutations. So I get my movement going. And then I'll do breath work like I showed you. It's actually called Wim Hof breathing. Um, have you guys heard of Wim Hof? Yeah. yeah. So Everson shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I'll do that. So that'll quiet my mind. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do my own self healing where what I do is I expand my aura, I cleanse and clear my chakras, I balance and align them. I energize and activate them. Um, then I, once I've healed myself, I send out healing to all those who need it. And that's my day and, or that's my meditation. And it's honestly not that long. It's about with the sun salutations, it's about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. And if I have to cut something out, I just cut out the movement and I'll exercise later. And I just do a minute of the breath work and then the self healing. So you just tailor it because you don't always have time for everything. So Quickly pausing this episode of the show to let you know that my private one-on-one -on -one coaching container is now open. Over the course of 2021, I'm only going to be working with a small select group of women to help them return to feeling like they're at home in their bodies, to help them lose resistant weight, to feel less anxious and more energized. My one-on-one -on -one coaching is truly for you if you're tired of feeling depleted, overwhelmed, bloated, or like you're just not enough. There's no magic pill or cleanse or detox that's going to work. You are really ready to make that commitment to yourself and create the habits that will lead you to hormonal balance and vibrant health. I'm here to help you get to the root cause and create meaningful change. If you're feeling called to work with me so that you can finally feel at home in your body, head to the link in the show notes to learn more. For, for someone who, you know, has never meditated before and, and, you know, maybe isn't aware of some of the things you just mentioned, what in its most simplistic form, what would you recommend, you know, to, to get into it? Like a guided meditation, yeah. the like the counting your breath. I think that's yeah. what you're just, into. you know, uh, like going to your journal. Um, I think the journal is really great for manifesting like yeah. and right, exactly what you said yeah. writing down how you want to feel because if you have intention with what you're writing down I think that's that's one of my favorite things and it's all honestly like a therapist to me but I think Chad's question is about like what what's the simplest way to simple yeah. yeah yeah exactly so I would say then if you're just starting I would just yeah. say sit down for three minutes Mm -hmm. I would like I would just start it because once you can start at three minutes because here it's so important 
to tether yourself to the bigger picture before you step into the day. Otherwise, I think we all know life will take you and life will take you very, very fast. Other people's needs, you know, work, it, it will just, it will take your roots out and blow you in the wind. So the morning practice, just before you even pick up the phone, just open the eyes, you know, if you need to like do something, let a dog out or, you know, take care of some kiddos, have a cup of coffee, but then go have a sacred space, have a quiet place that you know that that actually symbolizes this is me time. And I'm going to sit down for three minutes and I'm going to put my hands on my heart. I'm going to close my eyes, relax my face and just feel my heartbeat and start with th just really, really slow breaths. I would say that's where you would start. Three breath or, you know, three minutes of hands on the heart, slow, deep breathing in a stable place where that is symbolizing this is time for me. Yeah. And then, you know, I imagine do it feels comfortable. Maybe you could play some soft music, you know, any, any version of sitting Indian style, you know, potentially on your knees with a block and, um, you know, behind your, your, uh, sacrum. yeah, yeah. You can always sit on a chair. Honestly, you can lie down too. Yeah. Again, you know, you can, you can just lie down hands on the, yeah. Meditation again, doesn't have to look the same for everybody. And another thing too, you can always have a mantra. There are so many mantras. I teach a lot with Kundalini yoga. I mean, there are mantras for expanding the aura, mantras for protection, mantras for removing obstacles, uh, mantras for opening the heart chakra. So you just yeah. find a mantra. Like, wow, I've been stuck. I need a heart opening mantra. Yeah. For our listeners who don't know what a mantra is, can you tell them what a mantra is? Just for anyone who's really new to this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. Good. Mantra is just a sacred sound. It's just vibration, you know, and there's so many om, um, om ganganapataye namaha. It's this, this vibration, or it's this repetition too. And a beautiful thing about a mantra, a mantra could be in English. I am love. I am peace. I am love. I am peace. I, I feel the vibration in my chest as I say that right now. Uh, a mantra will cut through the busy thoughts like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get through this. Oh my gosh. Mm, I am love. I am peace. I am love. I am peace. I am love. I am peace. So a mantra is just a repetition. Yeah. To the right here and right now. versus Yeah. To, to cut cut the thought patterns that are spinning. <laughs> totally. So like a huge thing for me personally, aside from the physical aspects of, of yoga was you always hear in yoga classes, how you can take it off your mat. You know, it, it goes well beyond that, well out of the studio into your life. And, um, you know, how long did it take you to really receive those benefits where not only are you in a calmer state, during your, your yoga practice or meditational practice, but how long did it take you to really, you know, really receive those benefits ongoing, you know, and throughout the day and just, you know, I think some of what Kelly mentioned, not, not get as uh, aggravated, anxious, et cetera. You're like less reactive. I, at least for me, I know the benefits of my practice have been, I'm a lot less reactive. I'm a lot more intentional about things that I'm doing and a lot more connected to the choices that I'm making throughout the day. Whereas like, I would just go downstairs and like stuff food in my face and like <laughs> not be thinking about it. Or I would, like I said, I would like, if I could, anything would set me off and I would fly off the handle. Like I remember one time years ago we were in target and I just yelled at someone and I was like so True. embarrassed before I, before I ever started <laughs> doing yoga and meditating. So <laughs> I think that just having that sense of calm, that sense of using your intuition to make choices, that sense of connectedness to everything that you're doing. I, I think that's what, you know, how long does that take to, to get there? I know for me, it was a while, but. <laughs> I mean, just your story of how long you really, when you really started to see those very profound effects. Yeah, you know, I'll, it's actually it's such a good question because I'm very clear on when it was. It's um because I'd been doing yoga again for quite some time, but I really was mostly in the physical. It was it really was for exercise. It was and it felt amazing and it did get me out of my head and my body. But it was when I started to do um for for me and my personal journey. It was when I stepped into Kundalini where I'm like, oh. 
it, yeah. Kundalini really rearranged me. Like it, it was a lot more with um, energy. There was a lot more times of whew, where I would feel that that spaciousness, um, the mantras really worked for me. Um, to me that, that practice really cracked my heart open. So it, I was, I was, um, I would say, I, and it's funny because I was teaching still too, but I was still very much on the surface. It, it was, I can even honestly say it was, it was physical and I was still on the surface and I would read nice quotes, you know, and it was very positive, but I started to, dive into the depths of it you know a few years in and again now that will be about seven eight years back where it's like okay ah uh, there's a lot more in this isn't it and then I I can say that's when you know I've always been a very nice person that's one thing I can say about myself I've always been very nice and very loving but I, I was a worry war so stressed out over analyzing everything oh my gosh did I do this wrong I hope I didn't hurt their feelings oh my gosh you know, like and I would just boop, 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 and, and I will say that unraveled me where I'm a lot <laughs> calmer now. And, and yeah, there's less of a head spin. And definitely, I feel like that practice really put my feet on the ground. But it took a while, you know? Yeah. Kundalini, so Kundalini, for those of our listeners who don't know, is, is a style of yoga. Um, and it's, I think it gets really deep. It gets to that deeper part. And another thing that you do that is so deep is your healing with Reiki and work with the chakras and all of that kind of stuff. So can you explain to our listeners who don't know what Reiki is? And I, for me, you've done a bunch of healings with me. We actually did like a training on Reiki. Um, I've never really done it on anyone before, except for when we were doing our training, but you're- it it you turns are, on even if you don't turn it on. So you have been healing people. <laughs> I think we did a healing like three weeks ago. You came over and and did one. So tell our listeners a little bit about what that is and um, what they could potentially benefit from if they were to get go and get a Reiki healing. And also part two of that question, why do we need our chakras to be aligned and open balance all the time yeah so yeah so i do um i call my energy energy healing i am a reiki master but i do i call it divine light energy healing because i've also done a lot of other things so it's kind of this beautiful whew, just of everything i've learned so i just call it my divine light energy healing and for me i was I mean, honestly, everyone should have an energy healer. It doesn't matter really how often you go, but it's just like um, we have our body that we can see and feel and we shower because we get the dirt off, you know? And if we didn't shower for a week, we'd get a coating. If we didn't shower for two weeks, we would start to stink a little bit, <laughs> you know? And if it went on, well, energy healing is like a shower for our physical body. Um, a lot of times we, we're just holding on to a lot of old stuff from our past, other people's stuff. If, if our aura isn't strong and bright and powerful and expanded, um, yeah, things leak out, energy is leaking out, other people's stuff is gooping onto us. So it, it's energy healing is just amazing for just an energetic shower. Um, and a lot of times with the chakras, they're the energy centers that are actually in our spine. It's like that beautiful rainbow that's in all of us. Um, and a lot of times some are completely closed off. Some are so open. You know, I know for me, I years back, I had this energy healing and the healer was like, whoa, your heart chakra is gaping open. And like, I thought that was good. I'm like, awesome. But no, because it was completely out of balance like with everything else. It was just not in proportion. So we had to pull it back in. So everything was balanced and aligned, um, working with our, you know, all the way from root to crown with our, you know, security and safety and just feeling grounded in this earthly experience, moving up to the sacral, just our creativity and our beautiful sexuality. Like, are we in flow with life? Our, you know, solar plexus, our power center, who am I? Here's my beautiful bright sun center. Am I feeling disempowered and a victim or is it no, I'm strong up to the heart. If we're having issues with forgiveness or self-love or trust, 
rest. It's the heart starts to close. We usually feel that one more than ever. So we need the heart to be open throat chakra with expressing truth, you know, place of choice, you know, what are we choosing in life? And, you know, third eye, just that beautiful intuition and crown connection to the divine. We just need them all balanced and aligned. So we're just leading a nice, healthy life. And chakras are just like the, uh, the lights on your car, you know, when you're driving and then ding, like low gas and then you go for a bit longer than ding low tire pressure and you know when the lights just keep coming on and you actually just get numb to the lights <laughs> you just get used to it like oh it's so bright and then what happens your car breaks down you know yeah. that's what the chakras are when we start to feel the symptoms of the chakras that's just like the car lights it's just like hey make sure your heart's open hey check your tires and so it just helps us pay attention to what's going on in life before the car breaks down, you know? So I know that for me, like when we do those types of healings and when we like balance out the chakras through meditation, I always come out like, being like, Oh, there's myself again. I lost her for a minute, but here I am. It's like, you should like exactly what you said, you showered off all the dirt and you just feel so much more clear. Yeah. Cause we're, we're so much bigger than this too. We are, we are, or we are bright and we're all in each other's auras too. It's like the air in the room you're in just cause there's a door doesn't mean it's different air than the room outside, you know, same thing. Like we're, we're merging with each other's auras. So that's why also we always hear we are all one. I, if I'm in the same room with you guys, I want you to be so happy. I want you to be so bright and vibrant and living your best life because we're mixing auras. If you're sunken in, you know, so that's why we all, yeah, are all one. We all want to be bright and vibrant and healthy. And, and also sometimes our auras will get holes in them or dents or tears if we haven't, you know, worked on them and, and our energy. We're like, why am I so tired? Or other people's stuff, we're carrying it for them. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's really important to keep all that, your energy body just bright. So, so, you know, especially in a pandemic right now, we're isolated or alone and, and you certainly can do yoga alone. You know, it, it's very accessible, which is one of the most wonderful things about the practice because you don't need a lot of things and, you know, really you can go to a number of places for instruction. Uh, same with meditation. You know, what does these practices mean to you in the sense of doing them with the people you love, you know, sharing that, that, that spirituality, that, that, um, you know, that love that you have and how has it been, you know, candidly, um, taken back a little bit during the pandemic and how do you, how do you kind of, uh, you know, get back to that or, or make do. Yeah, God, it's, it's so funny because it's been interesting because when that happened in March, um, yeah, it was like we all had a place to go where it's all like-minded people and just kind of like we said, when you go to your mat or you go to your place in the morning, it's like, this, this is me time. This is where I go. So we all had that and a lot of the places got closed and, and taken away. And so I actually even took a break. I was still teaching a couple of privates, but I took a break from um, teaching classes. And it's been interesting because people are reaching out like, oh, people are please, like, can we do something? Where where are you teaching now? Like, what are we doing? And, and it was just so interesting. It's like, oh my gosh, we need this. We need this. We need this more than ever. Um, so I know I got a big cue from a spirit, like you've got to show up and it, it was beautiful. But I'm like, but where do I go? You know, cause where I was teaching, um, that closed. So right now I'm doing like a retreat actually next week, but a really beautiful thing that's been coming up. And I'd recommend this for anyone, wherever you are. And it just happened organically, but like a student would call and be like, hey, can you come over on a Friday night? And if I get a group of girls together, can you lead us in meditation and bring your crystal bowls? So, and I, a lot of people have been doing that. And I'm like, this is beautiful. People are kind of collecting their people, people who've never done meditation or anything before and introducing it. And we'll do anything from, I'll bring my gong. I have a beautiful gong. We'll do gong meditation. Cause gong is really great for people who have never meditated because the vibration 
uh, your mind actually can't wrap around it. It's, it's so divine that your mind's like, bah, bah. Oh, oh, fine. <laughs> so gongs a great way to get people started, but uh, yeah, so I'll go and we'll do breath work. We'll sometimes do chanting. I'll bring my singing bowls. We'll do um, healing. We'll do group healing for people. If they know people that are hurting, we'll do like a little prayer circle. So that's kind of what I've been doing now, just kind of small groups, it almost feels like it's like a little meditation party. So for your listeners, like, that's great. Like find a beautiful teacher wherever you are and have them come over. Uh, yeah. Instead of like having over and having movie night, you, you all get to have this beautiful divine experience together. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I think we need it more than ever. I mean, we're, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, it's, it's two days after American election. Um, yeah. So, you yeah. know, we need more well, yeah, creative like people I think people are getting creative like well I can't do what I used to do but I, I think for me the question is always but what can I do but oh. what can I do but what can I do I know I have this person and I know these are my great friends and I know my friends are really suffering right now why don't we all come together and remember you know the magic of all this and remember <gasps> what it feels like, you know, not to be in the head spin and just to feel good and joyful and reconnect. So yeah, we're all finding new ways to be. <laughs> I definitely think that's true. And I think that and that's just another benefit of getting back to your practice every single day is that you kind of turn more to that positivity and optimism um, yeah. rather than being in stuck in that negative mindset that I know that I was in for so long. And when you open yourself up to possibility, that's when the potential to really call it into your life is, is definitely there. But for the people who are in Vegas who want to do something like that, can they message you on your Instagram? Should they message you on Facebook? How can people get a hold of you or find you? Ooh, yeah, so my, I have a website and it's christielwithlove.com. Um, so you can either go on my website and just kind of see what I do. Again, I teach yoga, meditation. Meditation, uh, soul dance, movement, meditation. Um, yeah. And then just doing the small groups and private healings. So yeah, any of those things, you can either go to my website or yeah, on Instagram and Facebook, christielwithlove.com. C-H-R-I-S. So. Yes. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E-L. <laughs> uh, so now that we our time has literally flown by, Chad and I want to get into some really quick fire questions with you. So just think of the first thing that comes to your mind. So <laughs> I guess I'll start. So when it comes to your morning routine, besides the meditation practice, what else is part of that? Ooh, taking Inca out, my little dog who's sitting in her diaper right next to me, um, <laughs> taking her out. Um, and just, I do a little sun gaze too. Just, you know, I barely squint my eyes and I pull the energy in from the sun and wow. breathe it into my center. So. What's your What's, do you have like a hot water with lemon or coffee or? Oh, I'm, I'm instant coffee gal. <laughs> <laughs> You gave me the matcha and I said, there's some things I'm not, I'm not giving up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I've tried to do the tea. I'm like, ah, I've tried to veer, but I'm like, I love me some coffee. <laughs> Good reason. Um, so what's the best thing you've eaten this week? Oh, do you know my friend went to Alaska over the summer and I went to a meditation and she shows up with this big frozen halibut and she's like, I caught this. So I had it in my freezer and actually Cosmin just made it for me. So it was, that was probably the tastiest thing I had this week. <laughs> and, you know, we don't want to dive into the, the diet side too, too much, but, um, you know, you just mentioned you eat fish, you know, what is your, what's like a very abbreviated quick tip on, on, you know, your thoughts around diet just for our listeners. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I have to say it's so individual, you know, I was vegetarian for a long time and I, I just have for me and I feel for everybody, you just have to go by how you feel. It's not, this is this, you need to do this and you shouldn't have this. It's, you know, cause for me, <clears throat> 
I work a lot with like the energy. It's like, man, this cookie has sugar in it, but it certainly would open my heart chakra. So I'm going to have one. I will not have 10, but I will have one because that will bring joy to my life, you know? So I just, I always say, you know, go by feel everything in moderation. And again, and, and different seasons in life, like being a vegetarian for a long time, it really worked for that season of my life. And then all of a sudden I was needing more so for me it really flows and it changes quite a bit so I think that's the best advice that you could give to our audience that's what I try to tell people all the time like, I say that you know I, I am plant-based but most of the time but when I was pregnant with my son if I wanted a piece of fish like because I think I needed the extra protein that's what I gave myself and I gave my body and not labeling things so dramatically, I think is so important. And that's what meditation and tuning into your body really does for you. It allows you to tap into that intuition and say, what am I feeling right now without all that's these rules point. and restrictions attached? You know? Yeah. yeah. We really like to put people in a box. It's like, well, if you're this, then you're this. And then if you do that, then you don't eat this. And since you don't eat that, you probably shouldn't do this. And you also don't say swear words. And it's like, not nah. Sometimes I swear, sometimes I eat meat, sometimes I'm the most peaceful yogi. It's like, yeah, people, we like to put people in things and then hold them there instead of like, who are you today? What feels good for you today? And just staying in the flow, you know? <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> okay, so next question. If you were a color, what color would you be? Yellow. Oh, yes, you're our ray of sunshine, that's for sure. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, what is on your nightstand? On my nightstand, I have amethyst, clear quartz, and Mother Mary uh, blessing me when I sleep. Okay, I know this is supposed to be quick fire, but this is just too interesting. What does the amethyst good for and what is the clear quartz good for yeah amethyst to just to keep you connected to the divine especially in sleep time dream time to enhance you know getting the messages and clear quartz just a purifier an energy cleanser and purifier all right so we always ask at the end of the show for our interviewee to give our listeners because our show is called balancing chaos one tip for balancing the chaos of your life you can't say uh, <laughs> i can't do it <laughs> oh yeah meditate no no i'm honestly like my thing to balance the chaos i'm huge in um feeling everything in real time yeah. And so when I say that, you know, I'm like, you get mad, like, oh, and you close it up because you're like, I'm not supposed to get mad right now. Uh, <laughs> to move the emotion in real time, like, ah, oh, <sighs> okay, I feel better. <laughs> you know, I, I think that especially right now, because we're also all feeling everyone else's, you know, energy, like it's a little bit like this right now. So not only are we kind of oh, short, but I think when it comes up, not to ever do it at somebody, never do it at anybody, but you, you move it for you. Like <gasps> anger comes up. Oh my gosh. Like you see how it's stuck right here <sighs> and do a little shake out with a deep breath. <sighs> and then everything is going to be okay. <laughs> but you know, then bring yourself back, but I'm huge and feel it in real time. If it needs to be a swear word or a deep breath or a shake or a punch a pillow, just to keep the energy moving. So it's not getting locked in. Well, we always say what we resist persists. If you push it down, oh baby, it's going to come right back up. And oh, bite. It's going to shoot up too, like a cold in the cork underwater. Bloop. <laughs> so, and then you can make it fun too to me it's huge if you have kiddos to show even kids like hey you don't have to stuff it like when you get angry let's do a shake out and then you can you can also like yeah it's so good with family stuff too so kids learn like oh i don't have to hold this in i can and i can make it fun and we can laugh too you know that's how you move through it that's, that's how you move through all this stuff right now for sure yeah well Christelle, this was the Thank best you. interview. Thank you so much. We had so much fun. I always love talking to you. I could go on and on for 
hour. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is a long one. No, <laughs> thank you guys so much. I love talking about this stuff too. So thank you. This is awesome. And I hope that our listeners got some really good nuggets about spirituality and connecting to your higher self. Um, yeah. She is the, the best, best mentor for it. So we love you guys. Thank you for, for joining us and we will see you soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys so much. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also connect with us on social media at Wellness by Kelly. Drop us a DM for who you want to hear from.